Hey everyone, Eggman here with a, another video. And today we have an overview of Star Deck 13 Luffy, which is our first overview video for Star Deck 13 in general. And boy, does this leader need it. He's pretty complex for how his gameplay works and how he just kind of works in general. But once you kind of get the, into the swing of things, he's a lot of fun. And I do think you are rewarded for having a lot of practice and kind of just card game skill in general. So uh, in this video, we're gonna go over the deck in general, but we're also just gonna go over the archetype and how, how this works. Uh, and how kind of the, the decisions you make for this leader. We're gonna have an example deck list and then we're also gonna have a new thing to these videos, which is an example game to go over as well. Uh, I've been doing a lot of testing on my Twitch and YouTube and we did an entire stream going over Luffy specifically, which you can find link in the description uh, for the Twitch and YouTube sides there as well. So you can check those out, but I do wanna to try to make a gameplay, at least a match to go over each one time I do one of these. And I'll be doing that at least for the, uh, the Luffy, the Sabo as well well as the ace leader that we're going to go over the next couple days as well so make sure to be on the lookout for those look forward to them and let's jump on into this one so the luffy leader specifically uh, again he comes out of star deck 13 which is the uh the one with all three of these brothers here uh it's a yellow black leader 5k for life so pretty standard but has this rule of uh your face up life cards will be sent to the bottom of your deck instead of your hand and so that's any way not only if you take damage but also if you take uh, like Hiori are using an effect to put a card from your life into your hand. If it's face up, it goes to the bottom of your deck instead. So uh, it's something that that like interaction with Hiori specifically uh, caught me for a loop the first time I tried it. So don't make the same mistake I did. And uh, but that's kind of just the way it works. And the reason it works that way is it has this Dawn times two activate main once per turn. You may discard one card from your hand if your life is as at exactly zero. You may add up to two five cost cards from either your hand or your trash uh, to your life face up. So he heals two uh, for free, but they're also uh, the fact that you don't actually get that. Uh, the cards to your hand afterwards means that they're just kind of like temporary life. <laughs> And also the fact that the cards are in your life are important for uh, some cards we're going to talk about in a minute. But he's really interesting because of that. Uh, it's really, uh, and, and because you get this heal and the reason how the deck works, you really want to kind of aggressively take your life and go down to zero as quick as you can. Because when you do, you get a whole bunch of value swing for doing so. So let's kind of go over the uh, the cards in general. Uh, it's, it's, it's with the brothers here uh, that we're kind of going to go over. But all three of the leaders can take advantage of what these are, but they're also, uh, they're not, they're generic to yellow too. So if you find a yellow leader that ends up working better with these, go for it. But we do have uh, Luffy, Sabo, and Ace, and they pretty much all have the same effect. Uh, if you can trash this card, activate main, if you and you can reveal the top card of your life. If it's a five cost copy of the same card, so Luffy, Sabo, or Ace, you get to play it for free. And then if you do, up to one of your leaders gets plus 2k power until the end of your opponent's turn. So uh, you pretty much get to grow up with them. You go to one of your five cost ones. It's not color restricted, which is good because, you know, all three of our leaders have, uh, you know, they're dual color leaders. So they have different cards specifically like for this one, Sabo, uh, the five drop black Sabo is usually better in most cases, but uh, it's, it's really, really unique that that's kind of how it works. So uh, we have our Luffy, uh, the yellow one, at least activate main once per turn. This gets plus 2k power until the start of your next turn. And then if you have one or more life, you can draw a card and trash one. So uh, that, that effect just means you get to draw a card uh, with, and like you add the card from your life to your hand, but gets around Luffy's effect because you trash and draw, which is why it's like that. But sometimes you're kind of stuck at one life. So being able to use this Luffy to do that is really great. And he becomes an 8k until the end of your opponent's next turn as well. So you don't really mind attacking with him because uh he's usually bigger than what your leader looks like too so uh he's he's great uh he's like the the easiest to kind of work with we also have our sabo which i'll still say is uh the black one's the better one but we do have this one uh on play you can trash the top or bottom card of your life ko up to one of your opponent's characters with the cost of five or less so you can use this to I mean, get rid of a five cost, which is pretty good right now. Uh, a lot of cards are like that. You do have to take the life for it, but being able to do that and uh, and get closer to zero life can be very helpful. And then we also have the ace. So on play, if you have two or less life, this character gains rush. So being able to just be a five drop 7k, like you don't even have to do anything special. You can just hard cast this for five and you have rush, which is really good. It's the only one of the three that doesn't have counter, but I totally understand why. And I'd rather him be honestly a five seven with rush than a five six uh, with rush and, and one k counter so it makes sense to me so these are the the three main ones at least from the star deck themselves uh but they are very very nice to work in this engine so kind of how this works and you're gonna have to just 
honestly grind out a lot of games to find like the f true value and like the best sequencing for it a lot of the times but let's say we're at zero life uh, we put two Dawn underneath our leader. Uh, we activate main. We put a Sabo at the bottom at the ace and top. Usually we want to do that because Sabo's effect wants to affect the ace. Then we can play our two drops. So we can play the ace two drop. We know that the top card of our life is an ace. So we can play it for free. Our leader becomes a 7k and we already have the two Dawn attached to it. So it becomes a 9k. And we can do the same thing with the Sabo uh, played out as well. So we do go down to zero life. But then we become a 9k base leader. We have a unkoable uh, blocker, five drop 6k. And, uh, and that just usually is enough for us. So you do have to kind of like recognize uh, which situations going down to zero life loses you the game. Sometimes you just want to like play Sapo out and keep that last card in your life. And so, so like if your opponent can do uh, what? One damage against a 9k a lot easier than doing two damage against a 7k. You do have to kind of make that choice but most of the time you're safe and you can kind of draw a lot of 2k's that kind of help you out so that's what this deck wants to do it wants to go to zero use its effect and then it becomes again a 9k you get two bodies developed and you get a lot of kind of tempo uh, very easily which is really good uh, there's also kind of like the 10 dawn version of this combo real quick where we can play gecko moria uh, gecko moria plays a four or less or a two or less so you just do two two or less so you play the ace and the sabo you use their, their effects but then you also just have a 9k out it also means that you only have to spend one card from your hand uh, to be able to establish those two from your trash if you have them set up so uh, it's a way for you to kind of get you know control your your uh, how many cards you're putting out and then again you develop an eight drop 9k too which is very strong so uh sometimes you don't have enough time for this combo sometimes you just want to play it for eight but uh it's not too bad uh and like in a lot of and so you have to kind of build around it but uh i think it's a good combo not broken i don't think it's broken but it is helpful for getting you back into the game and, and just develop resources uh for free kind of thing uh, and then so kind of some more staples for the deck. Uh, we got our one cost. Uh, so we have our Machinos, uh, Monkey D. Garp, and Three Brothers Bond. Uh, Machino is our best one drop right now. We're going to talk about some cards we're getting in the future. But uh, being able to just take a card from your life for one is good enough. Uh, you know, add the top or bottom card of your life to your hand. Look at your life cards and return uh, them in any order. So being able to use this to, uh, like sometimes you get lucky and you have one of the five drops in your life. And you have a two drop in your hand, so you can kind of rearrange it to be able to do that. But honestly, again, just getting down to zero life, so you can use your leader ability and put two into your life, so then you can play your two drops and, and upgrade them. Usually worth it, so I highly recommend it. We also have our Garp and our Three Brothers Bond. They're essentially the same card, it's just on a battle card and an a, a event card. But we are very dependent on seeing our pieces and, and getting the rotation for them. So. Uh, getting these cards are fine. Um, you don't really do a lot turn one and two anyway, so you really can be afforded these consistency turns of Garp. Garp turn one and then afterwards just put Dawn underneath it and attacking with it and leader is fine. I really don't mind it and it's it's really helpful. Again, you do you are really import uh, like need to find your pieces and uh, even though we're running four like we usually run four of the the two drops and four or five drops, uh, which is narrowly enough i would say uh but it does help with having this garp and, and three brothers bond as well so there it is and then uh real quick just some ebo1 and opo7 cards i haven't really tested these myself but people especially in my chat were saying oh i can't believe he's playing with this deck without these legal uh it's going to get way better with it so uh we got flampe which uh just being able to it's, it's just a better mock you know for us more times than not uh, you may add one card from the top or bottom to your life, to your hand. You get to draw one, uh, so you, it replaces itself. Uh, so one one energy or one dawn draw two is very good. Uh, so that's why that's there. And we also have Viola uh, blocker uh, and also on play. Choose one of the following. Look at all your opponent's life, then return them in any order, or you can turn all your life cards face down. So being able to be a blocker, two drop is fine, but also being able to use it to uh, just help us get uh, our cards back into our life face down. Uh, that means that we can play some better five drops like Shira Hoshi and stuff that helps us cycle our hand because uh, our, our leader doesn't really care which cards we put five drops. And again, it's a blocker, so uh, it's helpful, especially if we're able to develop like a Sabo, uh, protect it. Then we get two blockers out. We put like a Shira Hoshi into our life and then we have some some good kind of synergy there, which is very nice. And lastly, our newest card in OPO7, Luffy. It's a five drop yellow Luffy, which is all we really needed. Any of our three decks can use it, but uh, it has activate main. You can place this card in your or this character in your trash. If your life is at two or less, KO up to one of your cost four, uh, opponent's cost four or less characters 
and then you get to draw a card and then the the trigger is you just pop a four or less so it just fits into what we're trying to do uh i think the luffy that we're playing already is just fine for what it does uh but being able to be more preactive, uh, proactive and actually have cost removal is good, especially since we're playing it in black. So if we need it to like use like an ice age or something to get, you know, rid of a bigger body, we definitely are able to with this card. Uh, we can get rid of a nine or less between the two, which is great, uh, especially kind of using the effects and being able to find it and, and be more consistent in that way. So I don't know if the ice age is good, but just a thought kind of thing. So anyways, that's kind of the guide part of this video. And let's go to our example deck list. So here's our example deck list. It pretty much uses all the cards we talked about and a couple different ads for it. Uh, this is probably one of the most basic builds you can make with this deck. It doesn't have a lot of tech for it or a lot of just spice for it, but I think for like a first way to play this deck, playing this one specifically helped me just learn how the deck worked in general and, uh, and without doing anything fancy or anything too complex, uh, just what the actual value of the leader and the engine kind of work together and then i can kind of upgrade it from there so again i think this deck by itself is good and can beat a lot of decks as is but uh it is basic and there are ways to kind of change it and make it spicier if you want it but i don't recommend that as like your first time with the deck as well so uh we're playing three of each of the two drops and five drops again i'm saying this sabo is fantastic being able to get the cycle is very good being able to get the protection is good as long as you're playing against anything that's not sakazuki which you will be playing sakazuki every once in a while uh this this card really can't be removed very easily and you feel very safe against it too so uh green is also something that can get rid of it kind of or interact with it but uh by and large you feel pretty safe uh being able to play a sabo and you use you like using your leader effect going down to zero uh but being able to play sabo and be like a 9k you feel like you don't really have anything you can lose to which is very strong uh other than that other tech adds uh hiori is just very good it's a 2k that we can put a card from our hand into our life and then get the effect so for example we can put a five drop luffy in there and then we can use the effect off the two drop luffy play it uh we get the cycle we go down into our life a little bit more and uh and then we become a 7k leader which means your opponent really can't attack us the next turn without investing resources if you do it early Early. uh our extra we're playing 12 2ks which i think you want more uh more than 10 honestly so 12 felt really great um satori is one it's a five drop and it's a 2k so it's fine uh you can i've never played it off life i usually just want to put it in hand but it could be something that's there and then khalifa is a bit of a, a tech ad this is my own choice if you don't like it just put four copies of satori but uh draw two trash two on play it's a four cost so you can play it off your uh, Moria, if you really need to, uh, give something, uh, your opponent's characters minus two, uh, to their cost during the turn, which I don't think really comes up, but you, we are really dependent on seeing our pieces a lot of the time. And so sometimes like if you got nothing to better do, just play Khalifa on four, get the cycle, and then, uh, you can be set up for better plays. So you either need to find the two drops and play them from your hand, or you have to find Gecko Moria and, uh, and then play them from your trash. So, uh, and then we kind of went over Gecko as well. It's great in this deck. Uh, if you don't have it, I don't think it's a staple. You can play without it. Uh, but if you want to kind of go in like a longer game or if you kind of want to refresh your resources, he's very good at doing that. And then you develop an 8-drop 9k, which helps us kind of close out games uh, in a lot of ways too. So other than that, we have two Shiro Hoshis. Uh, she's great because she draws threes, trash two. Uh, she's a trigger. Uh, and then also uh, it's a five-cost yellow card. So it just kind of ticks all the marks there um you i don't think you want to run more than that um there are like some weird matchups where you strictly need to find more five costs just to put into your life because you don't have your others mostly sakazuki because they're bottom decking your cards but i think it is impactful so two is great and it can again help you find pieces that you're needing in, in a deck that really does depend on its pieces a lot of the time so anyways here's my example list it's pretty basic but i think again you should probably start playing this deck and learning this deck with something pretty similar to this and then you can kind of do something more advanced from there so anyways let's go to our example game all right and here is our example game it's against Wumsy, who's on the op bounty ladder uh, i played a couple games before with him as well uh there's playing sakazuki the entire time and it was honestly our hardest matchup so they ended up switching to gecko which i think this matchup was a lot clearer and uh at least a little bit more back and forth so we play the garp turn one we have this weird situation where we kind of have a couple of each pieces but no complete one so we get the two drop of the luffy and just kind of hope that we find the other pieces that we need they're going to go attack 
back with their leader, use the Perona. So we're going to end up discarding a Shira Hoshi, and we're going to go down to three cards in life. We're going to play the Makino, and we end up getting a little bit lucky seeing that Sabo is in our life. So we're going to play the event as well, add another card to our hand. And then we're going to play the two drop Sabo, use the effect, go into our blocker five, six, and then we're also going to get the draw two trash two. So get the uh, copy of the ace into our trash. And then uh, we're going to be a 7k leader after also discarding our other five cost Luffy. So go into life. They go down to four cards. We're at one card in life pretty early, but again, we do kind of prefer that with this deck and we kind of pass it back to them. So they're going to play their own Sabo draw two trash two, get a brand new great eruption, just kind of pass since they really can't do damage to us. We're going to go a big six into their leader and uh, I'm going to guess they're going to take it, but they're thinking about it for a little bit. Uh, I do kind of want to be able to play a Luffy or something, but we're just going to play our Sabo, draw two, trash two, and uh, looking like we are kind of wanting to trash the two Luffys that we have, and we're just going to pass from there. So uh, I kind of feel like they're going to awaken us. They don't have to awaken us, but uh, they are going to end up doing it. So we're going to go down to zero cards in life. I feel pretty safe with two Sabos on the board. So they are going to attack with their 6k. No cards from uh from their trash to be played so we're just going to discard a, a hiori to combo out or counter out and uh, they're playing their copy of sabo as well so uh looking through what's cards that we have in our trash and what we need to do for it uh, i think we are in a good spot so we are going to start with putting two dawn underneath our leader we're going to use the effect discarding a sabo and then we're going to be putting a sabo as well as the Luffy into our life, since we don't have the two drop of the ace yet. We're gonna use our two drop Luffy from hand to play the five drop and become a 7K leader until the end of our opponent's turn. And then we are gonna start attacking with these Sabos because we're feeling a little bit confident on it here. So it looks like they're gonna go there and then go from there. So uh, two 7K attacks there into a 5K leader. Which maybe we could have been a little bit more defensive because that also means that we give them something that they can attack into outside of our leader, but that's fine with us. We're going to use Sabo's effect again, and then we're going to just get rid of. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking real hard. I think it's Khalifa since we do kind of need the Luffy to be able to use the effect again, but uh, we are there. And then we're a big 11k swing. They're actually going to go down to one as well. We hit Great Eruption, which I was pretty upset with hitting the Garp. Uh, and just only three cards in hand. But again, we are a 9k leader, which is pretty impactful. But it is in a, a pretty tough spot right here as well. So they're going to start off with a 6k lead on our Sabo. We're just going to let him go. Just means we have another card to go into. They have an additional Dawn. I think it's eight Dawn right now. Uh, they can be aggressive. They can be defensive. They end up gonna, going a little bit defensive, playing out the Rebecca. Thank goodness they didn't have an eight drop Gecko because that could have been pretty rough for us there. But... Uh, they are playing there, uh, looking at what they want to add to their hand with the effect. Looks like it's going to be a four drop Kuzon, and they are just going to play it out and draw a card and, and cycle from there. So uh, we end up finding uh, not the best cards here. Uh, we have a lot of 2Ks, but not much else. We're going to swing uh, 8K using the Luffy effect at zero life, meaning he just becomes a free 8K for the rest of the turn. We're going to use our leader effect. We're going to uh discard a card from our hand to put two cards into our life so we're going to go from zero to two we're going to get rid of the makino and we are going to put in uh, i believe we're going to put in the shira hoshi uh, at the bottom since we don't have anything that we really need and we that's fine if we get rid of it and then the luffy uh and then we're going to play the second luffy there so we're a 7k leader right now one card left in life that will go to the bottom of our deck uh, if it gets KO'd and this go from there. So uh, big nine into their five, they're going to block it. We're going to actually put a lot of Dawn into our, our Garp actually. So we're going to attack there, uh, go eight into five since we want these Sabos up. And uh, this is, they have to either like block it and 2K out or uh, they actually just block with Sabo and let it go, which is, is pretty surprising. So again, one card in life, uh, two in hand, but we are a 7K leader with two Sabo blockers out. So Somewhat good. That Kuzan is pretty terrifying, though. They're going to attack 5k into 2, so Garp gets KO'd there. And then they're going to minus our un, our, our, what, our 5, 6 Luffy there. So it is there. Uh, they're going to use Ice Age on our other Luffy as well. Or sorry, on our, our uh, Sabo there. So uh, they will be able to rob Luchi, remove both of them, which is pretty scary. And then uh, we are just left with these two boys. Oh, and they're going to use Sabo as well. Uh, to uh, with a second ice age so if they have an absalom in their trash which i think they do uh they will be able to get the removal of the sabo so uh, i think they're just looking at where they want to uh, attack into uh probably deciding to hit the shira hoshi uh or e either way they they had to ha hit into uh either my luffy or my 
uh, my battle card, my leader rather. So uh, they end up going seven into eight. It's fine. It doesn't super matter. But we are going to then uh, use our leader effect, or sorry, our Luffy effect as well uh, to get the extra draw there, which is really nice. We do have our Sabos, uh, which will help us get, uh, or sorry, our, our ace there to help get us for our game here. So we do have now three big attacks to to kind of close out the game. Uh, but we're not going to let our opponent know that until now. So we're going to discard one of our additional copies of the ace there. And uh, we're just going to put, I guess, Sabo and ace. We're going to use the other one, use its effect. Uh, so now we have a 7K, and then our leader is also a 7K. So we do have some pretty big swings. And you know what? I think we just, looking at math, I think that, uh, I think it was 11 and 12 are the good numbers for us. So, or sorry, 10 and 11. 10 and 11 are the two good numbers. So we're going to start with a 10K with the ace. That gets the block, which is a good news for us. We're going to swing 11, and uh, that will be it. Only 2K in there. So that's the game for this one. Again, we had a lot of games. This is literally the last match we did for for this stream. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. There's a lot more, and you can kind of see me start as, like, the worst player to somewhat com uh, what somewhat capable at the end of it. And, uh, again, this is a really, really fun deck, especially if you sink the time and effort into it. So that's going to be it. Uh, enjoy the little bonus clip from the stream, and I'll catch you all next time. There's one. <laughs> Why? All right. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't. I meant to hit concede. I, I'm not mad. Don't don't tell people I'm mad. Don't tell people I'm mad. I'm not mad. I promise. I meant to hit concede. I promise. 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 Don't. <laughs> don't. Don't. Don't say I'm mad. Why? Don't. Don't. Don't think, no one clipped this. This, that was, it was, I promise meant to be conceit. I promise. I'm sorry, my opponent. <laughs>